Good day everybody. Um, this is a tutorial for modeling a 3D jar in Autodesk Maya 2015. Uh, we are going to model a jar something like this. Uh, it's used normally in the kitchen for uh, you know some storing some jar, some spices etc. So you're going to model this jar um, in Autodesk Maya and we're going to follow these steps written over here. Um, modeling a 3D jar, it's about 23 steps complete which you need to follow to create uh, this jar. Okay, so I'm going to start off fresh and just get rid of this. And I need a, uh, a as a basic shape my polygon cylinder if I can create, which I can create from here or from polygon primitives and create a new cylinder. Now, if you just click on the grid, uh, you may get a default size. Okay, but if you just drag and drop, uh, uh, if you can just drag like this it will be a custom cylinder okay so this is how <clears throat> I create a new cylinder reduce the size a little bit because it looks a little bit too much bigger so I set this as my basic uh, shape and then what I want to do is go to the attribute editor and uh, set the caps to zero for the poly cylinder so this is my um, attribute ed editor. This is my poly cylinder, and I set the caps to zero. What it does is the top and the bottom will be uh, basically empty. And now I'm gonna switch to the faces. This is uh, what it says right click and uh, switch to the faces and select the top face of the shape. So I'm gonna right click, select faces, and select the top face only. And now I'm gonna use the extrude command this is the extrude command or you can go to edit mesh and under the edge find extrude okay so I click on this extrude or this symbol over here to go to the extrusion so what extrude does it actually takes um, another surface out of this mesh by, by remaining within this mesh so I click the extrude command and then I need to scale it in a little bit now here is where you may run into some problems let's say if your symmetry is world and then you extrude and then you do this or scaling in it will be very very uneven so I'm gonna undo that if your symmetry is off and now you scale it in it will be very even now <clears throat> Okay, so make sure your symmetry is off and the soft select is also off. The marquee is uh, uh, turned off for camera based selection and you should see something like this. Once this has happened, then we'll follow the next step which says <coughs> uh, scale to type R which I just did scale to to scale it in a little and then type G to repeat the last action or extrude. You may type G to repeat the last action which is extrude again or you may go to the edit mesh and extrude again so G is to repeat the last action type G to repeat the last action and W to pull it up now previously we scaled it in extrusion meaning we uh, took out the new surface and we extruded it, scaled it in meaning we made a smaller circle within it but now we will extrude and pull it up so I type G and now I pull it up to pull it up you need obviously this tool the shortcut of which is W that's what it says so you, now you press W and pull it up so I press W and I pull it up a little okay that's what it does so I will put it up this will create the jar edge now I need to do the same thing on the bottom so I come on bottom select the face at the bottom and I go to extrude or I type G that that's what it says on the bottom the select the face and hit G to repeat extrude R to scale it in again so I click on this or type G whatever you like and R to scale it in and type G again to have a bottom edge W to put it down you can click on this extrude or type G and then to pull it down to pull it down you need this menu or type W to pull it down so I have a uh, if you look at this I have a 
uh, a footing of this jar now at this point. Now I have a basic shape of a jar. It is uh, not very complete at the moment. I need to get rid of this face over here. And uh, <clears throat> when I do that, it says say the top face of the uh, of the jar and delete it. The jar should become hollow from inside, which it does become. And now what we need to do is <coughs> on the side wall of the shape, right click and select edges. Now how many edges do we have over here? Let's go to the object mode and find out how many edges do we have. Uh, if you click on this, okay, and go to the channel box editor, select your uh, polycylinder, which is the basic shape. Now, how many um, how many of these edges do we have over here? Now, this is what we need to find out. So, I click on polycylinder, uh, subdivision axis is 20. Let's increase this to 40 or maybe 30. You'll see these lines along these walls will increase okay so it, it is not setting up very well but the, the certainly increasing if i what if i make it like only 10 okay so now they are reduced and originally this was 20 so the reason we want to see that this is 20 uh, is basically what we want to do uh, the reason why this gets d-shaped by the way when you change the axis is that the extrusion is happening within this so if you want to make any changes to those edges you make it before you create the extrude now the reason we want to find out this number is we want to create four <coughs> uh, corners in order to create four corners uh, what we will do is once we know this is 20 four corners each corner will have like two edges that will make it a corner so four corners means you need to leave eight edges and the rest of those you need to delete so 20 minus 8 is 12 so three from each side you will delete so let's go to the edges one and shift select the second edge shift select the third edge and you delete and you move this a little bit shift leave the two because this will form one corner and shift select three again and hit delete leave two again shift select three edges and hit delete and i think that's the last one now we'll do leave these two edges shift select one two three and delete so now you'll see that you have four um, corners edges representing four corners one two three and this one is four so now you have <coughs> these four corners what we want to do now is we want to select these remaining edges you cannot you cannot just uh, marquee select like this because in some cases you know the inner edge will also be selected so you don't want to do that make sure you shift select by yourself like this or if you have camera based selection turned on you can marquee select drag and marquee select in that case so now we have all these uh, four ed eight edges selected what we want to do now <clears throat> is we want to scale them out so you see from the top it is a circular shape right now if you look at this what we want to do is we want to have it a square shape from from here from the wall side and at the same time the the top should be remaining the same the bottom should be remaining the same so we'll scale this out using the scale out tool if you click on this and uh, I'm going to scale out a little from here and the same amount from here approximately so <clears throat> come back here and you will see it is the shape is now little more square from this place uh, from the from the sides so the reason why you don't do it from here is let me just do it show you it will go up also if you scale it out from here they'll also increase in all sides x y and z sides which we don't need we only wanted them to come out a little bit <coughs> not increase their heights 
you can adjust that later also if you like by the way so let me just increase a little more okay all right so that is not a circle now anymore if you look at these walls and it certainly is a circle from the top okay that is my shape uh, over here for the jar um, now we need to create a helix helix is uh, the shape which will be forming the top part <clears throat> which you can have a cap on and tighten it so we will create from create polygon primitives helix and uh, <clears throat> let's let me just show this to you. you can you create this by three steps one two and then three this is the number of coils over here okay so this is how you create a helix so let me just do this again polygon primitives helix and i create a helix now okay that's my helix let's look at the numbers we have over here <clears throat> So we uh, go to the attribute editor and select polyhelix. Under polyhelix history, we need to find out coils, height, width, and radius. So let's go to the attribute editor. Uh, select our this shape, polyhelix um, um, uh, two, and under polyhelix history, we find out coils, height, width, and radius. We need to give him these values 4.1.3.01. So this let's make it 4 height 0 0.3 um, height 0 0.1 0 0.3 then okay 0 0.1 0 0.3 and the radius is 0 0.01 0 0.01 okay <clears throat> this is our helix now let's scale this big a little bit it's yeah, okay we scale it make sure it's not uh, too big enough to be attached on top of our cylinder okay if you don't see the z axis from here you may want to change your view a little bit and then bring it over here okay and let's position this on top of the edge this is my helix. I position this on top of the edge. Okay, you may want to go to the top view to position it correctly. Okay, so that's my helix over here on top of my edge. Now the next thing I want to do is uh, I want to combine these so this becomes one mesh. Select both meshes of cylinder and hit it shape and combine them. So I want to select this, shift select the cylinder also so both of these shapes are selected. Then I go to mesh and combine them. So they become one object. So this is one object, this is another object, uh, another shape but they are now combined together. So that's my my jar okay so i hope you liked it and enjoyed it thank you very much for watching